time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. The new Flames of War 4th edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. Hi everybody, welcome back to What's in the Box. Today myself and John are having a look at more bolt action. What do you got today, John? We have a British Airborne Jeep. Ooh. Which is all part of their, their newer sort of British paratrooper range. Okay. Um, so, I assume this is a Willys Jeep from a land lease, yeah? Well, you couldn't tell a Willys from a Ford. Really? Well, you can, but you can't see it on this model. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do you tell a Willys from a Ford? Oh, it's gonna, oh, this is gonna I'm be... I'm gonna make you do it. This is gonna be so nerdy, right? Go. So, early version Fords. Yeah. The, the back plate, the back piece of tin work on the body tub yeah. had a Ford stamp on it, so it had the proper big swishy logo and stuff on the back. Right. They got rid of that not long after the production started and just went to the flat piece. Right. So the only other way to tell between the two is A, lift the bonnet and look at the top of the engine, because mm -hmm. it'll say Ford or Willys on it. Okay. The other part is the, um, the mounting bracket for the radiator, mm -hmm. uh, which is different on the two of them. Well, on the... Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. On the Can I have Ford, I yeah. think it's on the Ford, it's a tubular piece. It's like a tubular crossbar that connects the two sides of the chassis and that takes the radiator. Okay. On the Willys, it's a, a stamped, pressed piece of metal, so right. it's more of a boxy look to it. That's the only outside look difference. Okay. So you're getting quite a bit of metal in this one. You are. So, the first thing I'm noticing is this little slip of paper, <laughs> which is important. Yes. So, if you get a mispack, you know who done it. So, Sebastian A, yeah. if this unboxing has gone wrong, I'm blaming you, sir. Poor Sebastian. <laughs> All right, so, uh, we have me and Body Ever Jeep. Yep. And it's really nicely detailed. You've got all the little bits of storage already molded on here. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps a purloin jerry can there. Yep. Or would we have had those by this stage of the war? Oh, yeah, we did, yeah. Right, so the, we would the, have copied that design. Yeah, the, the Americans made their own sort of jerry can design. Mm -hmm. uh, more, more or less what you see today as a jerry can with a little sort of lever pop lid. Yeah. They basically made those, but they had earlier ones that had a big screw top on them, which were horribly impractical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, this, this is one of the things. War actually really pushes nations to actually advance even the simplest kinds of technology. Yeah, like what, what do we carry petrol in? Well, we need something that can carry it safely. Yeah. Well, for a start, the Germans are using this thing that we've been calling a jerry can for a while. That's good. How much does it carry? It carries five liters. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Um, yeah, let, let's let's make that. Because all the British were doing in the meantime was a, f a little box thing about that size that yeah. had a tiny little brass cap on it. And that's their, that was their main fuel carrying yeah. jar. And you were like, that's Bad useless. Plan. That's, Bad it, plan. It, it looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's too small. The, the other thing is, even trying to pour out of that, now, uh, anyone who is pour it out of a jerry can knows you pour it it'll slush a fair bit there's actually a, a bit of a, a cheat you can do pour slow no turn it to its side and pour it long ways yeah yeah because then you get the air bubble at the top of the can and, and it's it got feeds more, more space easily. to actually feed out of it yeah uh -huh. something yeah. for me <laughs> <laughs> all right so you're also getting a little trailer with this yeah i think it's quite cool and you're probably looking at the canvas going why is it dented down like that you will see you will see <laughs> Unless you already looked at the front of the box, which we showed in which you case, will have saw. that has already been spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're obviously going to get all your tires that you're going to need. Yep. Now, um, there, there's two specific types as well. All there's right, so the, you've got this, which is a little thin one. The, the thin ones are the combat rims for the Jeep. Okay. So they're the four wheels for the Jeep itself. And then you've got these, which are heavier ones. Heavier for the trailer. Okay, so the, these go on the trailer. Yes. And, okay. And then this, of course, is your, your spare. The front spare, yep. With an entrenching tool. Yes. Just because. So that because piece. Everybody needs a shovel. Yeah. That piece also encompasses the front bumper of the Jeep as well. So that's ah, the see. whole front section of it. Okay. Uh, so we've got obviously all the rest of the tires. Yeah. We'll pop those out the way. We then have this little guy's body here. Mm hmm. And he's actually got the best job of all the guys in this Jeep. He's Sit just sitting in the trailer. Sitting doing nothing. Sitting in the trailer. <laughs> uh, you then got. Your passenger, who's got a machine gun up and ready. Yep. Which is, it's a nice touch to have that. It is. Uh, we then have, oh, who is this? I think he's the trailer guy. 
Is he? I think oh, he's right. the trailer guy. Yeah. All right, so the other guy's probably so sitting in the back. The, the other guy's the back passenger, I think. Well, we'll see when we're done. And then we have the guy driving with his hands on the steering wheel. Yep. Driving in a very strange manner. Driving, driving as if he's not driving a Jeep at all, because that steering wheel is way too high. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not even that. It's, it's whenever you're sitting with the, the steering wheel, he's sitting like this. It's a stable way to drive a Jeep. If he hits the brakes, that's going into his guts. It's going into his guts anyway. It's only a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> crumple zones. There are no such thing on a Jeep. The entire Jeep is a crumple zone. And it takes passengers and everything else with it. <laughs> okay, we've got a little bit more of the, the stowage yeah, here. Little stowage rack. Which is got some nice little details in here. Just little bags, packs, mm -hmm. rolls. Yeah, cool. Uh, we then have this little sprue. So what is all on here, John? Right, well, those first two are your gear selector and your... Um, this and this? Yep. So the taller one's your gear selector. Right. The one beside it is the one that changes you from a two-wheel drive to a four-wheel drive. Okay. So it's and your actual transmission. Then this? Uh, that, if I can get a little bit of a closer look at it... Was it a little tow hook of some sort? Yeah, I think Maybe that's Maybe the, the thing to hook the trailer on? Possibly, yep. Yeah, that's the, tow, that's the tow hook for the back of the trailer. All right, and then this? That's the tow hook for the back of the Jeep. Okay. Uh, then... The couple of lights, yeah? Um, are they? I think they are. No, those are magazines for the machine gun. Oh, okay. It's a little Vickers K gun, I think. So it's nice a to little, have this. A little mag for it. Okay, next up. You have the first up is the axle for the trailer. Yep. And you have the two axles for the Jeep. Yep, both and, with drive units. Yep, and that's the front tow bar for the trailer. Ah, I see. Okay, and then we of course get the heads. Yep, a nice mix of berries and helmets. Yeah. So you can mix up who has what. Yeah. All right, question, John. Mm -hmm. How useful were these in theatre? Because uh, the, these are a little workhorse piece, yeah? They are a little workhorse piece. I think there was, what, did they say about 600,000 of these things built during the war? Yeah, which is why so many people restore them, uh, even today. So, yeah, it's why they're the single most popular and common military vehicle in private hands. Yeah. Ever, pretty much. Um, right. uh, in in theatre, the thing is that... You're, you're rolling around in something that has no armour, no protection. Its only protection is its speed and its size. Right, now here's the thing. It's an airborne Jeep. Yes. So would this have been dropped in on like the horse or gliders with these guys? Probably, I'm not sure if the horses took them or not. Possibly the horses took them if I remember. I, see, I've been to a museum where they had a horse set up and I was like, that's cool. Yeah. And then looked in it and went, there's not a lot of room. <laughs> um, but potentially, I think they might have put maybe one into a jeep they maybe took some of the the harnesses and stuff out and actually fitted one in well you see i'm, I'm remembering seeing private rounds uh, there was a scene where they actually came across an airborne encampment yeah and i saw a, gl a glider I, with the one jeep of, sticking out of it one of the the american ones which i can't remember the name of at the minute now they did definitely put some jeeps into some of their gliders but as they say in saving private ryan it was a little heavy yeah the, the glider wasn't primarily designed to take something that yeah. weighed a quarter ton never mind the people yeah so, um, well, I don't know because if you look to Germany and the Gigant, the Gigant's amazing, guys. If you've never seen a Gigant, look go, for go, look go for. YouTube. Well, you're possibly already on YouTube. In fact, yeah. If you're if you're on YouTube and you're wondering what the heck's a Gigant, yeah. go and find a documentary called The Secret War, and it's the final part that's called What If, and they do a, a section on all the stuff that didn't quite or did make it into production but got changed a lot, or stuff that didn't quite get there in the end. Like Argosy and all these weird things. They yeah. talk about a few things we've been unboxing as well. Yeah. And uh, they talk about the Gigant and it is insane. Yeah. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, Sebastian, I've noticed a mispack. No, you haven't, have you? I have. I have. <gasps> oh, no. So we have our transfer sheet, yeah? Yes. We have two of them. Are they the same? Identical, yeah. Well, it's hardly a mispack because it's, if anything, it's a plus pack. It counts. It's a plus pack. It's mispackaged. It's not, got mis two. it's not mispackaged. You've got the correct contents, plus... <laughs> Bonus! <laughs> anyway, you probably potentially need them for maybe putting some stuff onto the, the jerry cans and stuff. You could put a medical thing onto a jerry can or See, water. I don't know, because you, you have enough of everything on these. Yeah. No. Oh, well, I'm, I'm really not going to complain about that. That's no, not at all. Some really simply do, because these little things, they can stick together a little bit. Back to Jeeps and theatre. Yes. Because I haven't actually answered the question yet. Oh, right. Um, the Airborne took the Jeep because they loved it. Uh, a lot of the guys out in the desert, um, the 
long range desert group and stuff they had like big chevrolets but they also shifted to jeeps the early sas used them a lot too right. so that was the long range desert group long range desert group and then the the sas did a whole the desert group and them i think um, they did a lot of raids on like airfields and stuff in the desert using yeah. jeeps that where they had mounted twin guns on the front and another one on the back and all this sort of stuff. Oh, I just have Generation Kill stuck in my head now when they took the essentially, airfield. yeah. Is that was that the birth of that sort of tactic? Yeah, that of was running light vehicles in with guns. Yeah, because if you're moving fast mm. and the enemy's not expecting you, you don't need armor because right. you're there. The shock of the the attack puts the the drones yeah, that, on the that back. holy crap moment. My gun's not ready. That moment of I'm lying in bed, having a cigarette, reading a letter from home, and what is that noise outside? <laughs> There's 12 Jeeps have just tore through your airfield and blew up everything on their way through. And at the front of them is an Ulsterman going, ha ha, because Paddy Main was there. So <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> the crazy Ulsterman uh, that he was. Yeah. Was he the one with the broadsword or the one with the longbow? Because I, I know there, was, there were two guys that were just absolutely nuts. One uh, was carrying a broadsword, the other was carrying a bow and arrows. You, you had Mad Jack Churchill, and I can't remember who the guy was. It might have, been, it might have just been Mad Jack Churchill all the time, I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, but Jeeps in theatre were good for shock, yeah. and you know, turning up where they didn't, you didn't expect them. Because A, they're small, yeah. they're fast, they do about 50 miles an hour on the road if you're pushing it. Yeah. You don't want to hit the brakes at that because they're disc brake they're, they're drum brakes on the front and those things can never be balanced. So right. if you if you hit the brakes at fifty miles an hour in a Jeep, don't expect to stop in a quarter mile. <laughs> well that, that's like our police land rovers over here. Yeah. You know, when you're doing ninety miles an hour up a hill, well, not up a hill, maybe down a hill. The the, the difference the brakes become more of a suggestion. The difference is that that's a four ton armored Land Rover with carbon disc brakes on the yeah. front. They've given it every chance to break. The Jeeps don't. <laughs> right. But you'll you see Jeeps everywhere. And the British Airborne used them a lot, particularly in Arnhem. Uh, they had expected to get a lot of Jeeps in. A lot of them didn't make it, but the ones that did became very mobile and helped them get to the, the areas in Arnhem where they, they could actually be effective with them. See, th this is one of the things. After the war ended, because the Jeep was such a ubiquitous vehicle, it did just get sold off to the public straight off the bat. Yeah. And I, as far as I know, I think the actual design for it got sold to a lot of different countries and they started making their own version of it. What what you find is the, the birth of a British legend in, in inverted commas because I absolutely hate the damn things. <laughs> Land Rovers. Land Rover as a company basically yeah. took a Jeep and went, We can upgrade that. We yeah. can make that a better, more serviceable vehicle and what they ended up making was a piece of garbage with a decent chassis on it. Because <laughs> if you take, if you strip down an ex-military Land Rover or a, you know one that you find on a, a typical farmyard, mm. you strip that thing down to the chassis, put a Jeep chassis right next to it, you can go. It's exactly the same, only slightly bigger. Yeah. yeah, it's the exact same transmission layout, engine layout, gearbox axles, everything just is exactly the same. Mm. So okay, you so know, John... good original design there, Land Rover. Anyway, <laughs> so John's Christmas lift. List, no Jeeps. No Jeeps or Land Rovers. <laughs> In one-to-one -one scale. Well, we mill scale is fine. Well, we have a one-to-one -one Jeep, yeah. as, as the boot camp people yeah. from, that came for the bull yeah. action one Dixie. actually know. Yeah, Dixie, um, found in a hedge Yeah, about 20 miles from here. Really? <laughs> yeah, she was in Garva. Re in, in that's a, where you got it? In a, in a hedge out the back of uh, an old engineer's uh, garage. So what, the guy bought it, planned to restore it, and just never did? Well, he bought it. He, no, this is it. He bought two of them off the army in the sixties, the early sixties. Right. Painted one yellow and painted one blue, and just used them as runabouts on the farmyard. Makes sense. Because he actually paid, if I remember right, because they found the receipt. It was like twenty shillings each. How much is that in today's money? That's not. Is that a pound? Is that? It's not Com even a pound. Comments below. It's not even a pound. <laughs> it's probably like seventy p each. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, you will never buy one of those for that. Never, days. ever again. So he bought these two things and drove around the farm yeah. with them. Um, Did he modify them much? No, no. They, they just were, left them as is? They, they were basically as is. Okay. Just took a few bits off here and there that weren't needed. Yeah. Um, Possibly a machine gun mount. Yeah. Well, they never had them. We actually found out. Never had them. Uh, um, so he used them for a while. Then he got into like the engineering fabrication business. Mm -hmm. He then passed away. So there was an auction happened. Right. And Dad went, oh, I knew that fellow. I'll go down and have a look at the auction. Uh, so he's sitting at the auction. I know this is a bit of a ramble. I do apologize. No, it's fine. It's fine. I like these. Um, and he's sitting in the auction, and this this lot comes up, and Dad looks at it and goes, "That's a Jeep gearbox." So he puts a he puts a bid in of all of fifteen pounds <laughs> for a brand new Jeep gearbox and wins it. 
And he's like, all right, well, I've gauged the crowd here. They didn't know what that was. Uh, and he's, he's like, I wonder, because he remembers back in his misbegotten youth, um, knowing a farmer that had a couple of Jeeps. Yeah. And he's like, I wonder if this is the same guy, because it was way back when he was like seven or eight right. or 12 at the latest. Yeah. And he's like, I'll just go for a walk. So he walks out the auction, looks around. And lo and behold, there's this Jeep with, sl with slightly rim blue paint yeah. lying in the, behind one of the sheds. Right. And he's like, huh. So he goes to the family and he says, w would you like to sell that? Because I would like to buy it and actually have a Jeep. And they're like, we're not sure. We might keep it for dad's memory, you know, do it up ourselves, that sort of thing. And he was like, no, that's fine. Here's what it's worth and here's my number. And they uh, said, okay, fair enough. Two weeks later, we get a phone call. Do you still want the Jeep? Yeah. So we come down for two and a half grand and pick this Jeep up. No, she was in a sorry state. I wish I still had the photos of the first time I seen. I caught eyes of it. Right. Um, because it was a sorry state. Yeah. But at the same time, you looked at it and went, you're not as bad as I've seen some. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, like, you guys have done quite a few Jeep restorations. Uh, we're on Jeep 4 now. You have I one at the minute? Think. Yeah, there's there was one. We're actually repairing a body tub off one that we've recently finished. Right. The one that was a complete pain in the backside. Oh, is that the one that the brakes kept spitting... No, the, the gearbox kept crapping itself oh, right. and throwing oil everywhere. Yeah, no, what was the one you had? It had, uh, oh, it was something to do with the brakes. You kept putting the fluid in, but it just, the brakes wouldn't Well, that's our, that's our Dodge. Oh, that's your Dodge. That's okay. our Dodge. Did it's you still, figure that one out? No. So it still has no brakes? It's drinking brake fluid by the gallon, and we don't know where it's going because it's not leaking out, but we can't get a brake pedal. <laughs> that's so weird. We've put, you know the bottles of brake oil you get yeah. like, like that? We've put two of those into it now, and we have no idea where the oils went. <laughs> okay, anyway. Back to our airborne Jeep. Yes. So it does come with the stat card with all the, the lovely, lovely stats. If I could get it into focus, mm -hmm. you've got all the options and some very decent weapons. Yep. So you can give it a light machine gun and a heavy machine gun. I love being able to do this in a game. Mm -hmm. Being able to put a fast mobile light or heavy machine gun on the tabletop scares the hell out of your opponent. This it's is essentially a mobile pillbox. Well, until you start shooting back at it. That's, that's the thing. It's a very light vehicle. It's not going to withstand very much. True, but if you, even just being able to reach out and touch somebody like that, if you advance into the wrong place, if you don't have a decent line on this vehicle, and I can set myself up to cover a good swathe of, say, the board, it's going to give you a zone where you don't want to go into. Get it in good cover. Get it in good cover and just set it up. Yeah. You know, and if you really need to go after an objective, I mean, like you'll remember whenever we did our sort oh, of Pegasus our Pegasus Bridge. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, at um, the end, I just bombed it up with a couple of Jeeps, and it was just like, ha ha! Almost got it. Almost. Almost got that one. You know, so if I had went a turn earlier, don't pop the bubble wrap on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I always say John's quite cat-like. All right, so let's have a look at uh, some of the options. So it's got Recky, yep. which is always good. Uh, may have a pintle mounted MMG with 360 degree arc for 15 points, HMG for 25 points, may upgrade MMG uh, to twin forward facing MMGs for 10 points. Mm -hmm. So you can build this to actually be like the ones you've described from this air uh, airfield raid. Yeah, so you, you can get it to do that and mm -hmm. the, the British Airborne did have quite a, a, a plethora of different modifications they did to their Jeeps, mm -hmm. particularly on up to the Arnhem run where they had like twin Vickers machine guns and like, twin Bren guns and stuff like that. I'm just sensing like a World War II death race. Yeah, it, some of them did look a bit Mad Max, to be honest. <laughs> there, there was one I've seen where it had like a little armoured glass, uh -huh. you know, just because you wanted to protect your face because that was the only bit of you that was exposed clearly in a Jeep made out of tin sheet metal. Well, I don't know, because if you get hit anywhere else except for the face, you're... You're kind of but okay, that, maybe, sort of. But that mounting held a 50 caliber, and you're like, you're firing a 50 caliber that rattles a half track when it fires, and you're putting it on a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's get you a way to build this, John, and yep. we'll continue to ramble a little bit. So we'll be right back. Okay, everybody, we are back. John has the British Airborne Jeep built. So uh, let's quickly get a look at it before I let John ramble anymore. So here it is here. It's so cute. It's lovely. <laughs> it it's, is. It's one of those quintessential World War II vehicles. Now, John, I do see you've put a base on this. Is that deliberate? Yeah, that's deliberate because I didn't want to um, bring this onto the unboxing set with just the, the little piece of metal holding the trailer to the Jeep. Mm -hmm. I thought if you put it on a base, at least it's a bit more sturdy there. 
Yeah, I would be tempted to do this for actually just gameplay pieces, and that's what, just a wee bit of cardboard, I assume? Yeah, yeah, just a little thin sheet of card. In fact, I think you did the, the same for your, your anti-tank and your bolt action force, didn't you? Ah, no, they were bu they were made off spare biscuits that we had from foreground. Ah, but the, the same idea? Same idea, yeah, just a, on a, a mm -hmm. shapely looking base. Yeah, I have to say, it's a lovely, lovely little thing. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, like, it's so charming. <laughs> I think I was right about the, the guy who was in the trailer, though. All right, well, let's get, let's get a closer look. Yeah, okay. So, we've got the main Jeep, and so you said it was the... Oh, wait, no, he's got his feet a little crossed, which is the first one I was pointing at, wasn't it? Yeah. Whereas he doesn't. Yeah. And he also has his hand out to support himself a bit, so I... Ah, I yeah. see, yeah. But it does look lovely, and I like the guy who's firing. He does <laughs> look as if they're just driving along, just going, I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for them. They'll come from the hedges. If anybody stops, if anybody comes between me and my next cup of tea, I swear to God, man, I'm going to shoot him in the face. What the hell is that? I don't know. I do believe you were looking to say that if anyone stops us getting back to base for a nice cuppa, I do believe I will shoot them in the face area. You think he's an officer? No, but he's English, probably. <sighs> but what if I if, what if I go to paint this right uh, and I do it at the Royal Ulster Rifles? Was it second battalion? Was the airborne one? Well, oh, okay, they have one. Well, yeah, they did. That. They did. That was that's our that's our whole reenactors British section. Oh, is right. Is the the airborne element of the, the Royal Ulster Rifles? Yeah, you see, I, I never really did anything. He with never those pays guys. attention. Never. No, pays no attention. I never did anything with those guys. I was doing the the third armored stuff. Oh, you were in with me and occasionally German. No, I give you the American kit so I could wear my German kit. Yeah, yeah and right. I never actually finished getting all my German kit because it just it was too expensive for me at the time. You unfortunately, didn't really start to be honest. No, I, mean, I got the, you got the, the smock, smock off me, and I think I got like a garrison cap. Did you? I, I definitely got a garrison cap or one of the ski caps. Yeah, ski caps. I, I definitely you, did. I thought you just borrowed mine. No, no, I got one of those. Anyway, anyway, I never got enough kit to actually do German. <laughs> But yeah, absolutely class little kit, very nice and easy mm. to put together. I do recommend making a little base for them though. Yeah. Because you will see if you have one of these and you come to build it, you realise that tow hook between the, the Jeep and the trailer is just little, little soft. Mm. And you don't want to ruin that. Yeah, so this just makes it that little bit better. Yeah. Alright, so any final anecdotes for the Jeep, for what you've done in it? Oh, actually, your, your dad taking it to France that year where it spat a piston. Oh no, it didn't spit a piston. <laughs> no? What no, was it... it um, I thought it blew something in the engine. It uh, blew a head gasket. Yeah. It actually it warped the head of the engine. This is the first time we'd ever had a, on a road run of anything more than three quarters of a mile. Yeah. Um, because Dad just to test drive it by going to the end of our road and back. Yeah. Just to get it up to temperature to see what it was like. But a long run yeah. didn't work out so well. So they were in Carantan. Like yeah, they were in Carantan. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they drove it around and then the thing went and blew a head gasket. And of course, Dad being Dad, if any if anybody any of you knew him, you would totally understand because they Mr. Ken Lance. their range of expletives would have would have <laughs> made it was creative would have made any Hardy man blush, <laughs> any Hardy man blush. So he went and he, he went to an auto jumble the next day in San Mary Glees uh -huh. and actually found a brand new head and gasket kit beside each other for three hundred euros, and he was like, well. I can't not buy this because I need my Jeep. <laughs> and he spent the next two days bolting this thing back together again. While in France. In France, in the middle of a field, using empty Coke bottles to collect all the oil because they had to drain the oil from the engine. Oh. So he was sat there draining the oil into Coke bottles and then having to go and get new oil to put it back in. In the meantime, he had a small audience of Frenchmen watching him. <laughs> it was like two, two Frenchmen that kept walking past, offering him coffee and then looking at the Jeep as he worked on um, so when so, he got yeah, home, so hang on, your dad essentially gave him a shield, so they gave him coffee. Yeah, this seems like fair trade to me. Yeah. So when he got home, and he explained it to me because I wasn't in France that year with him, he explained yeah. to me what happened, and I sort of laughed a little bit. And he said, "Yeah, I have to get in touch with my sign writer." And I was like, well, "Why?" He's like, "Oh, I've, uh, yeah, I need to get in touch with my sign writer." So I was like, "Fair enough." The next week, the guy comes along, and now th this guy is a very devout Christian, right? A very devout Christian, lovely fella. Yeah. Does the old style sign writing, the, you know, the completely freehand. Oh, the calligraphy hand. style stuff? Yeah, the calligraphy, but completely freehand. Oh, so he paints it freehand? Oh. Mm -hmm. he, he was a, I can't remember if he's still alive or not, brilliant artist. Really, really good. And a uh, <laughs> devout Christian. And Dad's, Dad had written down what he wanted to, to put and handed it over to the guy. And the guy went, can we change this word? <laughs> because this one doesn't really suit. And Dad was like, well, why do you want to change that word? 
really. <laughs> he just it was basically a really can. Yeah. So some of the guys that went to the boot camp, I think we showed it off at the boot camp. Yeah. We opened, we popped the bonnet, and now because of that, you can now see a little piece of sign writing underneath the bonnet that says, "Whose idea was it to buy this Mickey Mouse piece of junk?" Yeah. Ken Lyons, two thousand nine. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll assume junk was the changed word. Junk was the changed word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, everybody, drop your comments in below. Tell us, do you use airborne jeeps or jeeps in general in your games of bolt action do you find them useful i want to hear from people that actually play airborne lists because i'd like to see how they put them together because mm -hmm. we've got some we've got a fair amount of airborne stuff and i'm thinking of yeah. thinking okay of also if you are a military vehicle collector out there and you have your own funny stories of problems with jeeps we could do that as a new segment yeah we could <laughs> the problem with jeeps are <laughs> uh, drop them in the comments below we will move on we will see you in the next one Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.